Thank you very much, uh, Solomon. Uh, Dr. Shinko Ilunga, the co-chair of ANDI, development partners present, and we have quite a few. Uh, WHO, Dr. Maza, UNOPS, Mrs. Mekonen, UNICEF, Dr. Pearson, UNFPA, we just heard from Dr. Ndairo, and of course, Maglet Sikonda from NEPAD, AU. Uh, the director of NA, Andy, these two guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pressure to be here this morning to grace this important occasion, marking the official opening of the fifth African Network for Drugs and Diagnostics Innovation, Andy, stakeholders meeting. At the very outset, I wish to take this opportunity to welcome all our guests from various countries to Kenya and from various institutions to this meeting. We feel, like I said, very privileged to host you this morning. I also take this opportunity to thank all of you who participated in the organization of this conference. ANDI is a Pan-African initiative that is working to improve the health of Africans by facilitating the development and access to affordable medicines and other health technologies to the African population. ANDI is working to fill a gap that no other organization is filling. It promotes collaboration among African institutions and countries in support of the development of local health technologies, such as those from African traditional medicines and other locally produced health technologies. The work of ANDI has the potential to impact the health of children, mothers, young and old across the continent and beyond. Over the years, ANDI has supported several projects in capacity building in Africa. It has championed the whole concept of Pan-African Centers of Excellence and has to date recognized about 46 such centers in several countries across Africa. I'm pleased to note that Kenya is home to some of these centers of excellence. These centers have given high visibility and global recognition to several African institutions. ANDI is also implementing a number of important South to South and North to South collaborative projects, such as a high profile WHO demonstration project on diagnostic development with institutions in Africa and China. ANDI is also implementing joint projects and capacity building with some African countries. For example, the ongoing fellowship program with the Egyptian Academy of Sciences, among others. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenya is a founding member of African Network for Drugs and Diagnostic Innovation since its inception and recognition at the World Health Assembly in 2009. Besides hosting some of its centers of excellence, Kenya is finalizing the hosting of the East African hub of Andy at Kemri. Accommodation has been provided by Kemri, and Kenya will provide financial support to operationalize the hub. In order to enhance the process of ownership as a Pan-African in initiative, Andy is establishing a subscription-based membership that will be open to African countries, ministries, and institutions as well as development partners and foundations. Kenya intends to subscribe and continue to support ANDI, and we encourage other African countries to join the organization. As you can see from this meeting, all African scientists and institutions are passionate about ANDI, and we need to demonstrate and translate this into sustainable financial support for the organization the work is doing. Andy will be sharing its draft five-year strategy, 2016-2021, with stakeholders at this meeting for input. This strategy clearly demonstrates Andy's value proposition, and it comes at a time when the world is about to implement Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, and post-2015 development agenda. 
Ladies and gentlemen, health research and development, and development in the African region faces many challenges, including inadequate human resource capacity, infrastructure, and financing. It was in this right that the Global Ministerial Forum on Health Research, held in Bamako, Mali, in November 2008, committed to allocate at least 2% of national health budgets to research. Other funders were called on to invest at least 5% of health sector aid to research. However, most African countries in the region have not lived to this commitment. We are pleased to note that Kenya has put in place the necessary legal framework to actualize a commitment of 2% of the country's GDP to research and development through the enactment of the Science, Technology, and Innovation Act of 2013. It is equally important for countries within the region to embrace information technology and also forge collaborative networks for health research. While the extra-African collaboration should be encouraged, the lack of intra-African collaboration suggests the African institutions do not have adequate leadership and ownership of the research being done in the continent. The sustainability of research undertaken in Africa may also be an issue, especially when it is undertaken with short-term funds coming from and directed from external sources. It is therefore important to improve availability of information about ongoing research within the continent, strengthen the networking infrastructure, and develop financing initiatives to spur co cooperative research within the continent. In view of the hurdles that the African region has to overcome so as to adequately address the much needed health research and development, ANDI is a step in the right direction. There is no better organization to support implementation of these goals, these global goals, in Africa than ANDI. As I conclude, I once again wish to congratulate the organizers of this important meeting for finding Kenya an ideal venue for the fifth stakeholders meeting. On behalf of the Kenyan government, I want to assure you of continued support in the future endeavors of this very worthy initiative. We urge all stakeholders to also support Andy. And before I close, really, let me say one thing. It's one thing to come up with very good proposals, even to come up with legal frameworks like we have. It's another thing to ensure that we implement what we are saying. Even the act which we passed in 2013 it can it remain a piece of paper if we actually do not fund what we are saying in that act. And for us, what is critically important are two things. It is one, leadership and advocacy. Critically important. For advocacy, we are not short of advoc advocacy, you know, champions. Because looking around this conference hall, we have all that it takes in terms of partners to spread the word across the globe and across Africa. However, for leadership, that's our part. And that's why, in our case, we had to escalate this issue all the way to the head of state. The professor, Professor Mpoke, will tell you, when he went to Kilifi, Kemri, we had to make sure that we included those pronouncements in the presidential speech to make sure that what he committed became a directive. And what he said at Khamri in uh, Kilifi, when we were discussing with other partners, was that Kenya had to make sure that that 2% which was committed in the act had to, had to be actualized. Because thereafter, my job becomes a lot easier. Because the finance minister, we have heard what the president has said. It became a lot easier. And so what we have to do now, uh, Professor Mpoke, is to make sure that presidential directive is completely implemented. And to remind us that indeed that was the president committed. I would like 
my fellow other African countries and ministers do the same. Because without leadership in this issue, we shall keep talking about it and it will not happen. And it will be a shame that we keep on asking for funds externally, when indeed by allocating just 2% of our research, of our budgets, we can achieve so much for our countries and to make sure that what we are saying is sustainable into the long term. So I'd like to thank you once again our partners because without you, we would not have gone this far. And with those remarks, ladies and gentlemen, it's now my privilege and pleasure to officially declare the fifth and the stakeholders meeting.